Okay, now for the very reasonable question, why are we doing remit? Why are we doing sums? Why are we talking about sigma notation in calculus? Well, here's the thing. We've been talking about areas under the curves. If you have this symbol from a to b, f of x dx, then what we're talking about is the area under whatever that curve is, y equals f of x from a up to b. We're talking about the area of this. Ta-da. Whatever that area is. And the, the wackier your curve is, the harder it is to figure. Well, watch this. What we can do is we can split this area up into some number of pieces. Uh, let's see. If we split it in half, what is exactly in between A and B? Uh, it's, oh, let's not do it that way. Let's split it into quarters. Split it into quarters. What is the overall distance from here to here? The overall distance from here to here is B minus A. And so if you split it into four pieces, each one is B minus A over four. Each one of these little bits is going to be B minus A over a four. So a fourth of it. Which means that the very first one, this is, this is the point on the x-axis called A, and then this one is A plus B minus A over 4, and then this one is A plus 2 of those, A plus 2 B minus A over 4s. And this is A plus 3 B minus A over 4, and this one we could call A plus 4 B minus A over 4, although I'm sure you all think and like say, wait a second, those 4s cancel out, so it's really just a plus B minus A. Hey, wait a second. The A's cancel out. Oh, wait a second. It was called B already. So we get these points. What we do is we look at each of these slices as roughly, well, okay. What we want to do is we want to add up this piece and this, this area and this area and this area and this area. So we add them all up. And my favorite way of doing it is to use, oh wait, which ones do I use? I think I use right endpoints. I use the right endpoint. So I look at this first piece. I look at this first piece as roughly a rectangle. This piece number one is roughly a rectangle that is, has the same width, the width is B minus A over 4, and to get the height, I cut it off at the right endpoint. Whatever the right side is, I just use that as the height. You could also use left endpoints and cut it off like that and get a larger rectangle, but what you do is, the heights on this curve are gotten by plugging into the function. So all I have to do is plug in this right endpoint into the function. So this height here is whatever you get when you plug into the function, a plus b minus a over 4. And what is the area of that? The area of that is uh, b minus a over 4 times f of a plus b minus a over 4. It's a little bit tedious, but, 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 that is to say, can I squeeze this in here? Let me try. That is to say that if I want to take a to be f of x dx, that area is, well, I'm not going to say equals. That area is approximately equal to, because I'm not... I'm losing this bit. I'm losing this tiny little bit when I chop it off like that. It's approximately b minus a over 4 times f of a plus b minus a over 4 plus the second one. The second one has the same width, b minus a over 4. And now I plug in this endpoint. 
to get this area in here, I plug in the right endpoint, which would be plugging in this. F of A plus 2 B minus A over 4. And then piece number 3 is going to be B minus A over 4 times F of A plus 3 B minus A over 4. And then the last one is B minus A over 4 F of A plus 4 B minus A over 4. And this is where sigma notation is rather nice. They all have a B minus A over 4. I can take the B minus A over 4 out, and then I can sum up and say I'm going to go I equals 1 up to 4, and it's going to be F of A plus I times B minus A over 4. And I think what some of you are probably thinking is, this is kind of crude. I'm not actually finding this full green area. What I really am finding is I'm finding this area because I plug this endpoint in, I take this height, and I pretend that's the height of the whole rectangle. I'm really taking this area, and then this area, and then this area, that one's pretty close, and then this one I'm overestimating. Now the question is, does the too much over there count up? You know, it, it, it pays back some of what we lost over here, but overall, it's still only approximate. What can we do to fix this? Well, what we can do to fix this is what we love to do in calculus, and that is do things a whole lot. So, what can we do? Let's clean all of this up. Maybe I will abbreviate this with my editing software later, or maybe I... Oh, yes, I will. So, what we can say is, well, hey, chopping it into four pieces is kind of rough. How will we chop it up into more pieces? Hey, how will we chop it up into N pieces? Hopefully you don't hear the dog barking upstairs. If they're N pieces, then each little tiny piece is going to be B minus A over N. And the first, the first area I'm going to approximate by plugging in the right endpoint, which is A plus 1 B minus A over N into it. Hold on one second. Where were we? And then the next one is going to be that one is going to be a plus 2 b minus a over n. And so what we're going to get is this sum is going to be b, they all have a b minus a over n, and then we multiply by the sum, we want to add up all n pieces, i equals 1 up to n, and we plug into the function f the end point, which is going to be a plus i b minus a over n. The first one is a plus 1 b minus a over n, a plus 2 b minus a over n, and so on. And to get the full on Riemann sum, what could be better than n pieces? Okay, some distraction has come, but let's see if I can do this. Um, the only thing better than chopping it up into n pieces would be like chopping it up into n pieces as n became huge, huge, huge. That is the area under the curve from A to B of f of x dx is the limit as n goes to infinity of b minus a over n times the sum of i equals 1 up to n f of a plus i b minus a over n. And this is called a Riemann sum. R-I-E-M-A-N-N -N sum. This is a way of adding this all up. There are other tricks for adding this up. I am using the right endpoints to approximate each thing as a rectangle. You could use the left endpoints. You could approximate each thing as if it was a trapezoid. That is, if you had a little bit like this, you could approximate and treat the whole thing as a trapezoid. That's called the trapezoidal rule. There's ways that you can treat them as parabolas called Simpson's rule. But this is getting us to where we want to be. This is how to take any integral, even if it's not a semicircle or a straight line or a triangle like we were doing with areas under curves, and it requires chopping it up into an infinite number of pieces, but this can be done.